To watch these important lessons, subscribe to DP Education's YouTube channel right now. Click on the bell icon to stay updated on the latest lessons. Sri Lanka's largest free online school, DP Education. Hello, people. A warm welcome, guys. This is the sixth question. Sixth question of the 2018 paper. Same paper, different questions. 2018 WP. Third term. Paper two. Paper two. Okay. WP Western Province. Western Province of 2018. This is the 2018 past paper. Third term paper. Sixth question. Sixth question means these are accounting questions, right? Yeah, you know that. Yeah, of course you know it, of course. First part, sub part A. State income types generated through transactions. Uh, state income types, really? Income types. What do you mean by income types? Huh? State the income types generated through transactions. Okay. <laughs> income types. Are, um, well, in your syllabus, no, no types of incomes are mentioned. No. Different types of incomes are not given in a separate section in the book. Yeah, there's no topic types of incomes or uh, different types of incomes or no 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 but they're asking income types well to be exact to be precise there are two types of incomes children there are two types of incomes okay incomes as um, you know uh, Incomes are, incomes can be identified in, uh, uh, as two categories, in two categories, yeah, in two categories. Incomes of a business can be identified in two categories, okay? Um, there are revenue, Incomes or revenue receipts. Revenue receipts or revenue incomes. Revenue, revenue incomes, okay. And there are capital, capital incomes, capital incomes, capital receipts. Capital receipts. Or capital incomes. There you go. Okay. Well, can't go into detail because uh, these um, types of incomes, main income types, are out of the scope of your syllabus. Okay. But they're asking in this paper, state the types of incomes generated through transactions. Mm. Okay, I'll just I'll just make it very short and very sweet for you. Short and sweet. Revenue incomes are revenue incomes are day to day, every day operational incomes of a business. Well. Will you, will you have an idea if I say like that? Day to day, every day, 
generated incomes through operational activities like selling goods you get an income like um, rent incomes like discounts received everyday business operations generate incomes those incomes are revenue incomes okay revenue incomes but these incomes capital incomes are occasionally um, uh, occurring incurring uh, occasionally happening these are the incomes which are generated by selling non-current assets of the business selling non-current assets like the building or the or, or, a, or a land which which belongs to the business you can sell that land and obtain or earn a great you know substantial amount of money that is a, that is also an income but they don't happen very regularly regularly okay those are capital incomes that's what they're asking if they're asking that this is the answer okay income types of incomes there you go write a transaction that will increase equity and decrease liability mm -hmm. write a transaction that will increase equity Let's see, write a transaction that will increase equity and decrease liability. Okay, they're asking about equity. Asking about equity. And liabilities, right? Equity and liabilities, right? Okay. Increase equity. Uh, equity should be increased and liability should be decreased. This is the, 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 the type of transaction that you should come up with. Hmm? Can you think of this type of a transaction? To increase equity, owner must um, invest additional, additional capital. Owner must invest, like owner bringing in money as capital, but to decrease liabilities, the business should pay a uh, uh, pay to creditors or pay back a loan that will decrease liabilities. Right. So if the owner, the owner. The owner, if the owner pays a trade creditor, if the owner pays a trade creditor, huh? trade creditor, trade creditor, a creditor, a supplier that that we should pay money we have bought goods from this uh, big business and uh, now we have to pay the money is a supplier that business and, and a creditor okay if the owner pays that creditor and settles and settles a payable of a business payable of the if a bill which is payable the owner pays from his personal funds ah, that is a good transaction from his personal money what do you say Yeah, that is increasing equity. That is increasing equity and decreasing liabilities. Because when the owner pays the creditor, 
the liability decreases, obviously. Uh, but from his personal money, from his personal money, it's like putting more money into the business activities by the owner, that's like additional capital. So that, that increases the equity and decreases the liability. Yeah, increase equity and decrease liability. There, we have shown, we have shown that transaction. Second question, using the details extracted from Jania's business, answer the questions given below. Details relevant to manufacturing coir, coir dust flower pots are given below. Uh -huh. Perfect. Right, using the details extracted from Jania's business, Jania's business details. Answer the questions given below. Okay. Details relevant to manufacturing choir, choir dust flower pots. Oh, some sort of a dust soil, soil like clay or something. Uh, choir dust flower pots. Malpots. 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 <laughs> yeah, given below. Okay, so so this guy uh, Jania is manufacturing flower pots. Malpochi, malpochi, yeah. Choir dust used per pot, sixty. Sixty rupees worth of uh, choir dust used for one pot. For the producer, per pot. To produce one pot, one pochi for that uh, you know. Worker, direct labor, 40 should be paid. Both of these are direct. Direct materials, direct labor. Other expenses. Indirect materials, supervisor salary. Indirect labor, water bill. Indirect other, Electricity bill, indirect other, depreciation, indirect other. There you go. That's how you should categorize the information given when you have a set of information before you uh, go and you know, start your calculations. Number of pots produced during the month is 1000. Profit margin is 20% on the cost. Okay. What are we required to do? We are required to uh -huh. Required to calculate the production cost per unit Per unit cost, children Per unit cost Calculate the selling price per unit Cost per unit Selling price per unit now we have to calculate the production cost. Production cost per unit cost. That is important per unit cost. And selling price per unit. We'll do it right here underneath. Okay. We have already marked children. The important information is already there. Yeah. How to calculate the production cost? Hmm. Production cost is calculated by prime cost A. Prime cost plus overhead cost. That is the way to calculate the production cost. Hmm? Production cost. Calculate the production cost. This is the way how to, how to calculate the production cost, total production cost. Now we can take the prime cost now. 
we can. How? Because prime cost is the addition or the total of direct cost. We already know. We know the direct costs. We mark them. See, coir dust per pot, 60 plus. Dust, coir dust per pot, that is direct materials, 60. And direct labor per pot, 40. For one pot, for one pot, 60 plus. 40, 100. That is the prime cost per pot. 100. Per pot, okay. Come on. 100. Per pot. Unit, per unit. This is per unit. Hundred. Hundred. Per unit hundred. Okay. Plus, what did the overhead cost? What is the overhead cost? Overhead cost is the addition or the total of all the indirect costs. We know the indirect costs. Of course, we have marked. Indirect costs are already marked here. But all the indirect costs are given for the month. Other expenses for the month. 14,000, okay. 10,000, 3,000, 2,000, 1,000. Right. Let's see. 14,000 plus 10,000, 24,000. 24,000 uh, plus 3,000, 27,000. 27 plus uh, 2 and 1, 3. 27 plus 3, 30,000. Overhead cost for the whole month, 30,000. Okay. 30,000. But for the month, 1,000 units are produced. So when you divide this 30,000 from 1,000, you get overhead cost per pot or for one unit, 30. 100 per unit and 30 per unit. 130 is the per unit cost. 130 is the per unit cost. Hundred plus thirty, hundred and thirty. Easy, right? Easy if you know the system. Easy if you know the theory, how to do these things. Otherwise, these things will look like, oh my god, OMG. Yeah, 130. 130 is per unit cost, okay? Now, the selling price per unit. Uh, we have the profit margin right here. Profit margin 20% on the cost. This is per unit cost. 20% on per unit cost. So what we do is, we take the profit and add it to, we take the profit margin we take the profit margin 20 percent and calculate the profit per pot that is 130 
into 20 percent. That's how you do it. You have done these things, right? One hundred and thirty into twenty over hundred. That becomes how much? Twenty-six. That is the answer. Twenty-six. So twenty-six is the profit. Profit. Four hundred and thirty-one unit. One unit. Keeping twenty-six as the profit. So selling price is unit cost plus. Profit per unit. What is the selling price now? Selling price B part. Selling price. Yeah, selling price per unit. No. Selling. Price is hundred and thirty plus twenty six. That's it, hundred and fifty six. One pot is sold for hundred and fifty six. rupees there you go that is a simple calculation well yeah for sir so everything is simple first for, for him of course everything that he does all the things that on the papers and on, on the on the past papers and the political papers and everything is simple huh? yeah for him it's simple yeah who said that every question I, when I get the question and when I work it out, I say it's simple calculation. It's a you know it's a simple thing. <laughs> you get annoyed by that. Well, it is simple. It is simple, really. It is simple, really. It is if you have done these things properly, learned these things properly. And practice these type of questions regularly. It's a trick. That is the trick. Yeah? So that part is also over. Yes. There you go. Hmm. If you want to see all the figures, huh? now you can see all the figures. Yeah? The whole slide. Here I should mention production cost. Production cost. Production cost is prime cost plus overhead cost. Then this is the per unit cost. Hundred and thirty. A hundred is the per unit cost, prime cost, and thirty is the overhead cost per unit. Thirty is the per unit cost for a for a pot, pot. This is the selling price uh, per per unit. Per, per unit, that is for one pot selling price. Well, um, what can I say? Huh? Do more and more questions like this, and you will find it easy. Can we move on if you if you are like okay with this?
Uh, can we move on if you're okay with this? Okay, here we go. Uh, that's the bigger picture. <laughs> okay, moving on. Oh, that part. Bank balance of Chatushi's business, 20,000. However, the balance as per bank statement different to that. This is a bank reconciliation question. No doubt about that. Just by looking at the question, At a glance, you can say a uh, bank reconciliation question. We can identify a bank reconciliation. Bank balance of Chatushi's business, 20,000. Okay, bank balance how much? 20,000. Balance per, as per bank statement. Bank statement balance is different. Bank statement different. Okay. Reasons identified and given. Let's mark them. Let's mark them. Checks issued but not presented. Checks issued but not presented. 5,000. Issued but not presented. Unpresented checks. We have issued. So those checks are in our bank account. But not yet gone to the bank. That means not in the adjusted bank account of the business. They should be, unprecedented checks should be in the bank reconciliation. Okay. Of the bank rec. They should be in bank rec. Checks deposited, not realized, 8,000. Checks we have deposited, which means we have sent these checks to the bank. We have sent the checks to the bank <laughs> to deposit. That means those checks are recorded in our bank account already, in the business bank account. Already recorded, which means these amount eight thousand also should not go to the adjusted bank account. In our bank account, they are recorded. No need to record again. No need to adjust this in the adjusted bank account because when we deposit these checks, when we send these checks to the bank, we record them in our bank account. So they are they should be mentioned in the they should be included in the bank rec. Direct remittances from a data. That is a direct remittance. We don't know that these are directly deposited into our account by some data. Some random guy has put money to our account. Thank you, guy. But we don't know. <laughs> we don't know. Which means we haven't recorded in our bank account. That should go to our bank account, adjusted bank account. Adjusted bank account. Direct remittances should go to adjusted bank. Bank charges also. Bank has taken charges. We don't know that the bank has taken charges. So we should to the adjusted bank account. To our bank account. Standing orders, last one. This one, this one, and this one. Standing orders. The bank has paid directly um, for insurance. The bank has done that. We don't know that the bank has paid an amount of 2,500. So we haven't recorded in our bank account. That means it, this also, it should, be included in our adjusted bank account. Calculate the adjusted bank balance. Oh no, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Just have a small T account, name it as the adjusted bank account. Name it as the adjusted bank account. Okay. Take the balance of the bank balance of the uh, business bank account, our bank account. 
31st January 20,000. Balance brought forward 20,000. And we know that these items go to the adjusted bank account. We have already marked, marked, marked. See, direct remittances from a data coming into our bank, which means debit should be debited. Direct remit. 10,000, yeah. Then we have taken it. We have taken this. Then bank charges 500. Bank has taken charges for their services. They have charged from our bank account. Money decreasing in our bank account. Credit. How much? 500. Five hundred bank charges. Five hundred. We have taken this two and last one. Let's take the last one two. Standing orders two thousand five hundred. Paying by the bank. We have ordered some long time back. To pay, it's an order given by us to the bank. So bank has paid this money, 2,500. Again, cash going out of our account. Cash going out means decreasing. Credit, 2,500. It should be named as uh, standing order. Thousand five hundred. Is what is the standing order? Yeah, standing order. Standing order. This is the description. That's it. We have taken this, and we have taken this, and we have taken this too to the adjusted bank account. There we go. Can balance it, right? Can balance it now. Take the total ten thousand plus twenty thousand, it's thirty thousand. This is twenty, okay? This is twenty. Ten plus uh, twenty plus ten, thirty. Thirty on this side. And get the balance of the credit side. Balance carried down. Thirty thousand minus three thousand, it's twenty seven thousand. Let's balance carry down. Yep. Okay, that's it. Calculate the adjusted bank balance. There, we calculated the adjusted bank balance. I said 31st January. 27,000. Okay, that's it. Is it the only question in the third one, third question? Oh no. No, we have the B part two. Prepare the bank reconciliation statement for the month. These are the same information. I mean, this is the same case given. Give, that was given on the previous slide, same case, okay? Let's do the bank reconciliation two on that side, shall we? Preparing the bank reconciliation, shall we do on the, uh, on the, the previous slide? Huh? What do you say? 
preparing the bank reconciliation statement for the month of January because we have marked all the important things in the previous slide in this slide yeah yeah that's better I think we'll do it here here we go bank reconciliation statement very simple format very simple format just like the adjusted bank account yeah one description column if you want you can rule two narrow columns for amounts but it's not really necessary you can just rule one amount column rupees bank reconciliation statement take the adjusted bank balance to the bank rec and you write balance as per adjusted bank account 27,000 Mr. Bank balance in the bank reconciliation statement on top. Now what we have to do is reconcile. How to reconcile? Now we have this. We have this. This is the adjusted bank account balance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. adjusted we adjusted the bank account no? we adjusted the bank account adjusted why did we adjust it because there were these items which were not recorded in the bank account of the business now we have recorded and adjusted the balance this is that balance, adjusted balance. In that, still, there is a difference because of these two items. See, these two items. Now, let's reconcile. Checks issued but not presented to the bank. We issued checks, we issued checks, right? We issued checks and when we issue checks, checks going out of the business, I mean, checks are issued by the business, which means payments, payments are credited to our bank account, decreased our bank balance, but they are not presented to the bank, which means bank balance is not decreased. Then let's add them back. Add unpresented. How much? 5,000. Put that to the third column directly, second column directly, and take the balance, 32,000. Add unprecedented, yeah? Next, we have checks deposited, but not realized. We have taken checks from our customers, taken, we have collected checks from our customers and we have deposited these checks in the bank. When we deposit, we debit those checks because money going into our bank account, our bank balance increasing. But they have not deposited but not realized yet by the bank. That means bank has not added them. Let's subtract. 8,000 should be subtracted unrealized 8,000 whoa 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 minus unrealized 
checks eight thousand within brackets you know why why because uh, it's a subtraction now we can get the correct balance and real six subtracted 32,000 minus 8,000 how much do you get 32,000 should uh, should be subtracted by um, from 32,000 you should subtract 8,000 how much is it 24,000 that is the adjusted the bank balance no that is the balance as per bank statement this must be the balance on bank statement we reconciled okay here you go have a good look so that's how we do such a question not a very complex question um, same 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 uh, traditionally given items <laughs> these items are the traditionally given items no new nothing new yeah uh, checks issued but not presented means unpresented checks deposited but not realized means unrealized right moving on to the last part this is the same uh, slide i mean same question on another slide same bank reconciliation question oh yeah yeah this is the fourth part difference 1100 was credited to a suspense account the reason for this difference are as follows ah no name of a business whose business what is the reason i mean how who when uh, prepared the trial balance nothing is there just the difference of the trial balance created to suspense account. okay if you want it that way then do it that way for us also easy no? nothing to process nobody's business we don't know whose business uh was credited to the suspense account okay the reasons for this difference are as follows hmm. Hmm. let's first create the suspense account huh? let's create the suspense account there you go they are the no there you go there is the suspense account suspense account and credited 1100 1100 the difference credited so we have to write difference of trial balance 1100 then they have given reasons for the difference one two a b c three three reasons required hmm. what is required now write the journal entries to correct the above errors one two three and suspense account after the corrections have to complete this after the corrections hmm. first take this let's take this journal entries uh -huh. what do you have to do rule or prepare a journal what journal general journal of course general journal date description uh debit and credit okay
give it a credit. This is the general journal. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, first one on top. Z. Twenty thousand spent. Come on, man. Twenty thousand spent on purchasing furniture debited to the furniture repair account. Ah. Uh, 20,000 was spent for uh, purchasing furniture. That means it's an asset. Asset account should be debited. But instead of furniture account, it was debited to repair account. Remove it from the repairs account. So credit the repairs account. Furniture. Furniture repairs credited twenty thousand and twenty thousand spent for purchasing furniture. Furniture is an asset. Asset increase debit to the asset account because that is an asset increase. Mistakenly recorded in. Um, debited in furniture repairs account. Now we corrected furniture repair account credit, put it to the furniture account debit. Furniture account debit 20,000. Write your narrations. I'm not going to write your narrations for you, okay? Mm. First one done. Mm -hmm. done. Okay, done. Next, 10,700 of other expenses taken to the trial balance as 10,000. Oh, that is a mistake, of course. 10,700 of other expenses taken to the trial balance as 10,000. How much is less? 700 is less. In the trial balance, which side? Other expenses, children. Other expenses. Expenses are debited. In the debit side, 700 is less. So, what you do is put that 700 to the debit side of the trial balance. But you know very well that you don't write trial balance when you correct errors in the general journal. Hmm. You don't write trial balance. But put, you should like, the entry is putting the debit side 700 to the trial balance. Leave a blank. Put 700 to the debit column. Okay, this blank is for trial balance. Just to complete the double entry, we do that. Now, there is no other place where you, where there is a mistake. Um, only the trial balance debit side is, um, you know, less. 700. If the trial balance is affected by this error, other entry should go, must go to the suspect segment. If the trial balance is affected by this error, if the trial balance is affected by this error, if the trial balance is debited, other entry must go to the suspect segment. There you go. There we go. Do not forget your narrations to mm -hmm. we need more space in the general journal go down 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 right third one we are done with this one and the third one, this one. Credit sales, 3,500 recorded as 5,300 in the debtor's account. Uh -huh. Credit sales, credit sales, 3,500. It's a selling of goods. 
selling of goods selling so it's an income money coming in no money is not coming in it's a credit sale it's a credit sale income sales income credit that means sales account credit cash is not debited because cash is not coming in debtors account debited debtors account debited not 3500 recorded as 5300 uh -huh, in the debtors account how much is excess in the debtors account 3500 5300 how much is the excess 1800 excess Thousand eight hundred excess. Should I remove that from the debtor's account? Yeah. Yeah. So debtor's account should be credited. Debtor's account should be credited. Third entry. Debtor's account. Third error. Credit entry is debtor's account. Thousand eight hundred. Only in the debtor's account this mistake was happened, it affects the trial balance. If this error affects the trial balance, one entry must go to the suspense account. There's no other place to put the debit entry, put to the suspense account, 1800. There we go. Don't forget the narration. You can now finish the suspense account. Where is it? It's here on top oh yeah take the suspense entries from the general journal first one has a suspense entry no suspense entry not in the debit side not in the credit side second one has a suspense entry yes suspense account credited 700 put to the credit side of the suspense account 700 Uh, no description, no description. Next one, third one has a suspense entry. Yes, thousand eight hundred in the debit side. So put that thousand eight hundred into the debit side of the suspense account. Description letters. Thousand eight hundred. That's it. First entry, first error, second error, and third error. Minimize this to give you the full sized, I mean, full sight, not full sized. And you have the full site, the full slide. You can see the suspense account and first glance, at a glance you can say the suspense account is gonna get balanced off. Yeah, why not? It's gonna get balanced off, see? Thousand eight hundred on the debit side, thousand eight hundred on the credit side. 1800 and on the credit side 2100 plus 700 1800 voila <laughs> that's how you do it you have the general journal here you have the general journal here all three errors are corrected so write the journal entries to correct above errors done suspense account after the corrections done finished Children, six, uh, six marks question. No, four marks question. Not more than eight minutes. You have to do this and, and this and in eight minutes. This is the 2018 Western Province third term paper. Where is it? 
Oops. There you go. Two thousand eighteen Western Province third term paper. Sixth question. We have only one more question. That is the seventh question. We'll finish it in the next video. And the two thousand eighteen Western Province paper is over. Just one more video. One more question. Do get along and work out and finish off this paper with me. Until then, do well. Have a good time. Bye, guys. Bye. To watch these important lessons, subscribe to DP Education's YouTube channel right now. Click on the bell icon to stay updated on the latest lessons. Sri Lanka's largest free online school, DP Education.